All right, just to recap, uh, we've gone over the current source, we've gone over the differential amplifier. Um, let's draw those a bit different. Um, let's look at the current source in case you kind of are still confused. Um, we have a uh, resistor and two diodes. That just sets up a voltage. So we have some, some voltage, V. And we're going to run that into what's known as an emitter follower. So whenever you have an emitter follower, it's just an n-pin transistor, usually, and a resistor and an output. So whatever voltage you have here, you have the same voltage here minus what's called the V, B, E, the base emitter drop, which is usually about 0.6 volts. So whatever voltage you had here at the base, you've got here at the emitter minus the 0.6. So that's all this, uh, that's all the emitter follower is doing, is it's uh, creating a voltage here. And then that voltage across this uh, resistor sets up a current. And that current will appear everywhere. Okay, there's a tiny bit of current here to get the get this working, but it's maybe one one hundredth of the current here because of the beta of the transistor. So we just sort of say that's ignored. You could put it in the calculation if you really need to, but it's kind of ignored, and it, and the currents currents here, but it's constant. You have a constant constant voltage here, across a constant resistance, constant current, and it's over here. Then the differential amplifier we can draw as um, something like this. So if we turn this transistor on, things kind of go, things kind of go this away, and if we turn this transistor on, things will go kind of this away. And if we have, instead of a resistor, we have a constant current source, then we have the same amount of current in these two legs. The, the sum of these two currents is always going to be equal to the current on the output. And instead of drawing a resistor, what you'll see in the schematics is a circle with an arrow. And a circle with an arrow means a constant current source. So if you ever see something uh, something like this, you'll see that there's a constant current source and that's a differential amplifier. Okay, so let's go to the next section. Uh, the next section is, guess what? A constant current source. Uh, we have our two diodes. We have our, uh, we're gonna ignore all of this stuff. So we have a uh, resistor, Two diodes sets up a, a constant voltage here. That constant voltage is a constant voltage here minus the VBE, which is across a constant resistance, which causes a constant current. And that constant current is amplified by the transistor, so we have a constant current in this leg here. It's going to be a little higher this time. Um, we have basically the same voltage here. Um, and so we're going to have the same voltage here and we have a different resistance. Instead of 3.3k, we have now um, 470 ohms. So instead of having something in the 100 microamp range, we're going to have something in the 1 milliamp range uh, over here. So we're going to build this up and measure it and see what we get. You notice that instead of having a 220k resistor, we now have a 22k resistor. And that's because we're going to be drawing one milliamp through this through this transistor. So we need a little bit more base current um, to get this transistor to turn on. So we have 22k instead of uh, 220k. We're about a factor of 10 different here, right? 100 microamps, one milliamp is a thousand microamps. So we're about a factor of 10. So they made this resistor a factor of 10 different. So that makes sense. All right. I hope you can see this. We have a 22k resistor here and a diode and a diode to the bottom rail and we're going to be measuring the 
voltage across. Let's spread this up with the camera. All right, so we're going to be measuring uh, voltage from from rail to rail is 24 volts, and across this diode, across the two diodes, we're getting one and a half volts, 1.47 volts. So that's about uh, 0.72 across that diode and 0.7 volts across that diode. So that sounds more reasonable. Remember over here where we had the, uh, the smaller currents? We had uh, 0.5 volts across that diode and 0.5 volts across that diode. So why, why do we only have 0.5 volts across these diodes and we have 0.7 volts across these diodes, which is what we would normally think about? Well, that's because diodes aren't perfect. Um, if we draw a graph, you see that? If we draw a graph of um, voltage versus current, um, we start at zero and we go out and the diodes then turn on. They have a curve to them. And somewhere out here, let's say it's one milliamp, we can read 0.7 volts. But if we're down here at 100 microamps, we're going to read a smaller voltage. We're going to read half a volt. So that's uh, the operational current of a, uh, of a diode. Um, all, all diodes have a slightly different curve to them. Schottky diodes are different than silicon diodes, different than germanium diodes. So, and even diodes to diodes. Um, uh, I believe if you even get uh, like a 1N4000 series diode, um, depending on the voltage rating of that diode, it may have a different um, uh, characteristic of forward voltage and breakdown voltage. So um, it is important that you choose the right diode for the right job. So um, what we what we can see here in our in our schematic though is instead of having remember over here we had about one volt biased on our here on our transistor, and so we had about 0.4 volts across uh, this. Now we're going to have 1.7 volts here. We're going to have about 1.1 volts here across our 470 ohm resistor and so we're going to actually have uh, a different calculation that we'll have to do. So let's put in the rest of our of our uh, constant current source. Okay so we have our resistor and our two diodes. Now we put in another uh, NPN transistor. The base is connected to the constant voltage here and the emitter is connected to a what's the value? A 470 ohm resistor uh, to the negative rail. So let's measure some uh, some voltages in this circuit. Back up a bit here. So again, across our diodes, we're getting about 1.4 volts. Our base emitter drop of our transistor is 0.6, and across the um, 470 ohm resistor, we have. 0.86 volts. So 0.86 volts divided by 470 ohms. We can get out the calculator to do that. But I have a 1k resistor in the collector side of things here. This is a placeholder. But we can measure the voltage across that 1k and we're getting 1.8 volts. So we have 1.8 milliamps. Since a thousand ohms is a milli, uh, so 1.8 volts across the 1,000 ohms is, is 1.8 um, milliamps. So our constant current here is 1.8 milliamps. So let's uh, do the calculation and make sure that physics is still working. Um, let's see here. I'll put in my, my calculator. And what was that voltage again? 470 ohms. We have... Uh, Point, uh, this is 0.86, so 0.86 divided by 470 ohms is 
1.83 milliamps. So everything is working, physics is working, yay. All right, so we have our constant current uh, source built up. Uh, it's a little higher than the uh, schematic shows at one milliamp, it's 1.8 milliamps. And uh, so now we have to put in the rest of the circuit. Um, the next part of the circuit, um, the, uh, let me get the next part of the circuit out, is basically this transistor here. Now this transistor here is going to be in the constant current leg of this current source. So it's going to see 1.8 milliamps going through it. And so that will be through these two diodes here. And then the base of this transistor, that's the control for this transistor, is a 5.1K resistor. And it comes over here to our differential amplifier. So when, the, when this uh, Q1 di uh, transistor turns on, the plus uh, signal of the op amp turns on, then it will pull current through this leg. And it pulls it through this 15K, but it also pulls it through this uh, 5.1K. And so uh, part of the current is flowing this way, but another part of the current is going to be flowing through this PNP transistor and turning this transistor on. So when we turn on Q1, we're also going to be Q turning on Q4. Um, so let's add that to the circuit. Okay, so we have uh, the uh, PNP transistor hooked up. Uh, so its collector goes through uh, the two diodes and then through the constant current source. And uh, if we look at the output, so if you look at the uh, schematic here, uh, the output is the collector, goes over here. Uh, it also has these two diode drops to compensate for these two diodes and these two uh, uh, transistors to get rid of the zero crossing distortions. I'll put a link into the other uh, video I have on, on why these two diodes are in circuits. Um, but let's monitor this uh, voltage output. And currently we're at minus 10.2 volts. So that means that uh, we are looking at a negative voltage down here and not a positive voltage, so this transistor is off. So if this transistor turns on, then uh, this voltage will go up here to plus 12. So let's take a look at that. Um, I need a wire. Uh, that's what wire will do. So I'm going to take a look at the positive, I guess it's right here, uh, no that's not it, that's not it, uh, it's right here. Okay, so I've put a wire in the uh, uh, positive input of the op amp, the negative uh, input for the op amp is grounded. So that's connected to the ground and now we're going to we're going to put a voltage here. If we put a voltage lower or equal to this one, then nothing will happen. And if we put a voltage higher than this, then hopefully uh, we'll get current flow in Q1. So we're monitoring our output and uh, let's see here. We are at minus 10 volts. And if I put the input uh, to ground, nothing happens. And if I put it to plus um, 12, you can see that our output goes to plus 12. So why was that? Uh, that was because uh, this transistor turned on, it starts pulling current through this leg, it starts pulling current through this leg, it turns on this transistor, and this transistor then pulls up to plus 12. Uh, so it started at, at negative voltage, uh, it didn't go all the way to negative 12 because it has the circuitry in the way, um, and it has these diodes in the way, so we're, we're measuring right here. Uh, but when we put in uh, and turn on Q4, it comes up to plus 12. 
So that section seems to be working. So the only thing that we have to add is the uh, the output transistors. Now I'm a little bit worried about the output transistors. Um, if they're um, they don't seem to be current limited in, in any way. <laughs> So I'm not sure exactly how much current draw we'll be seeing uh, across here. There's 24 volts across these transistors, so uh, I've, I've got to go see what transistors the guy chose for this circuit. Make sure that mine aren't going to be uh, be destroyed.